Hi, I'm Eric Giboy, Giboy.com, and today I'm going to present you the Fujifilm X-T3 thanks to Photosura.com. Let's start. Well, for a long time I've been uh, trying to get uh, one of these X-T3 and uh, at last uh, Photosura could lend it to me so I could try it. Many of you asked me uh, how it was and uh, when I could review it, so here we are. Uh, I want to do a special mention to uh, Photosura because uh, it's their anniversary on the 20th of June, 19, about 2019. So if you're in the Canary Islands, in Tenerife, you can go and visit their shop and you will be able to try any camera they have there. So uh, happy birthday to them and uh, thank you for lending me uh, some gear so often. So I think it was important to, to tell it, especially because uh, they don't uh, ask, they let me tell anything I want, positive, negative, anything I want about the, the gear they lend me. Thank you again. So let's start. Uh, before this review, I had reviewed uh, the X-T2, the X-T1, the X-Pro2. Uh, I didn't like the X-Pro2 by the way, the X-T30, X-T100, whatever, I think in my channel is there, I will put some links anyway. Let's speak about this Fujifilm X-T3. Uh, there is a new firmware that lets you have the, the face and eye detect, so I actually updated the, the camera so I could uh, test that part. So this is an APS-C camera with a 26.1 million uh, pixel. Um, I'm going to show you some pictures and video I've done with it, not the best pictures. I do it to feel how the camera goes, how it reacts and all this, so it really is not the best picture, but I'll pass them and you have a look anyway, so you can have an idea of the, the what this, ca this camera can do. First, I'll show you, I will tell the specs as I go, but I'll show you the camera itself. It's a nice camera, it feels really nice in your hands. Uh, this is a typical Fuji uh, well working with the top wheels here. You have the speed, you have uh, the ISO, here you have the compensation for exposure. Uh, it's, uh, it writes minus 3 up to plus 3 EV, but actually uh, with menu you can go up to 5 and minus 5. Uh, so it's really easy to use, they all have locks. So if I cannot uh, turn anything here, same lock here. But then you have some other wheel underneath. If you look at it, you can actually pick if you want uh, the mode like video, uh, single shot, uh, continuous shooting, high speed, low speed, panorama, all this. On the other side, same thing with the wheel, as you can see here, you can actually move it and then you decide if you want for the exposure central uh, measure, uh, if you want to have a uh, matricial, all this, it's all written here. You have a function button you can actually uh, arrange here. The screen is orientable screen, but partly orientable like this or like this and also like this if you do some uh, uh, vertical shootings like this but it's not a fully articulated screen and that's, I think it's a bit of a pity everything falls your hand in your hand is very easy so it keeps the uh, Fujifilm philosophy here you have the speed wheel so uh, if you put a speed here and here you have the ring for the aperture and you put the aperture, then you set in manual, fully manual, you decide your, your ISO and you decide your uh, speed and uh, your, your aperture. But if you want to do like uh, aperture priority, you can fix your aperture here. Then you put your uh, speed wheel on A and this way is like aperture priority, the, ca the camera will cal calculate the, the speed. You could also put ISO on automatic if you want it. Same thing the other way around. If you want uh, to fix the speed, you fix the speed and then you can put, if you want, the, uh, the aperture on A, automatic, so you have uh, speed priority. If you put both on A, you actually have, you have your camera in full automatic. So it's really nice, it's really easy to use. Uh, the only thing is here, as you can see, the speed are like full, like you have uh, 500th of a second, 1000th. Two thousandths, uh, two thousandths of a second. So, if you want third, you have to use this small wheel in the front to go in third increment. So, I think that's a bit of a problem for me. Uh, I've always complained about this to Fuji, but Fuji users love that, love it. If you're on five hundred, if you move here one third, you're on six hundred and something. You move again, then you go to eight hundred, and then if you go to one thousand, you need to turn the top wheel again. There's one way to avoid this: is to put uh, on T. 
here, we put the wheel on T, and then everything will be changed with this wheel. So I think at the end, if you're likely to be stuck on using this small wheel anyway, why do you need to have this? I, I prefer to have a non nothing written here and have a, like on the Olympus, a wheel that turns all the time and you have uh, all the speed there, but uh, it doesn't, of course, this looks a lot nicer, and no, no doubt about this. And uh, everything is at hand, actually, you have also uh, the quick menu here. If you click here, you get the full uh, access to, to the menu. The screen is touchable, but not for everything, actually for focusing and uh, and uh, triggering also, but it's not like the, the Canon 250D or SL3 that it's really great to navigate. This is probably the only thing great I found about that camera, but uh, this touchable is okay. It could be better, but it's okay. And also, here, all this button you can configure and for example if I click here I can decide the kind of uh, film if I do like a film simulation like Provia, Adelvia, all this. If I click on the other one, uh, if I click on the one here I could decide if I want what white balance I want, all this. All these buttons are completely uh, configurable and this is great. You have joystick here so you can change your, your autofocus point. If I go on the side, here you have two memory cards slots okay here the if lock and the exposure lock also on the other side you have a small door also and here you have access to uh, jack for microphone jack for headphone uh, micro uh, hdmi and also a usb-c and important if you plug a, a power bank in the in this uh, USB-C, you can actually charge your camera while using it, whether it's video or photography. So this is great uh, because uh, you know that mirrorless battery normally don't last too much, so, so it's good to have this possibility. The build is really good. Also, you have a, a, a connector here. You can have a for remote control here. Okay. Uh, this is really good. Here you also have the director. You can actually change that. There's a lock also, so you don't accidentally uh, change it. You have to pull and then you can move again, okay? It works really, really, really nice. Really nice. It came with a kit lens, which is uh, the 1855 2.8 f4. It's a really good lens, stabilized. I'm going to tell you more about uh, the camera told you some of the specs while I was showing you the, showing you the camera. So I'm going to tell you about the ISO because very, very often people ask, they want to know how does it deal with the high ISO. I pass you some pictures. Uh, they go from 16, I, I published from 1600 to uh, 25, uh, to 12,800. Uh, Why? Uh, because uh, I don't put lower because actually any camera now does well from uh, until 1600 more or less so the native iso is 160 up to 12800 but it can be forced to 80 100 125 25600 and 51200 honestly i think files are completely usable on 12800 maybe you'll have to play a bit with noise but it's okay on 6400 they're really okay and uh, i would not go too much over but i think that a camera that gives you a usable file at 12800 uh, is more than fine i hear sometimes some people saying they would actually need uh, 50,000, otherwise they cannot make a wedding i just think if you cannot make a wedding without 50,000 iso then i think you're not a good photographer you just uh, see is spy and uh, stabilization important this camera has no ibis which is a uh, in-body image stabilization you have a stabilization if you actually use a lens that is stabilized that's a bit of a pity i think i i, I would love to have uh, in-body uh, stabilization with uh, the xt3 on the uh, fuji uh, xh1 which is a top 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 of the range for them uh, it has a uh, body stabilization uh, but well, it's another price, another thing, but still, this one has a better processor, so, well, you cannot get everything, but that's a bit of a pity. Shutter speed, from 15 minutes up to uh, 8 thousandths of a second, but if you put on bulb, uh, bulb mode, you get 60 minutes, 
and this is with a mechanical uh, shutter if you use the electronic shutter then you can go up to 32 uh, thousandth of a second so for action photography there is a uh, no problem to have a really short uh, shutter speed burst rate very often people ask me uh, what's about the burst rate if i do sport photography you have two kind of burst rate depends if you own uh, uh, electronic shutter or mechanical shutter with a electronic shutter it can go up to 30 frames per second but then you have a crop of 125 if you don't want that crop it goes up to 20 uh, frames per second and then if you're on mechanical shutter it's up to 11 frames per second which is quite good for if you compare to to some uh, uh, many cameras that that people actually use for, for doing action photography 11 frame per second it, it, it's quite good so I, I, I would not complain about that bracketing that give you a lot of possibility of bracketing like uh, obviously exposure bracketing uh, simulation of uh, analog film you can have uh, a bracketing of three different style like uh, Provia, Velvia maybe a black and white or whatever I don't like I don't actually use that because uh, for me it's more important to prepare that in your computer and have uh, the, the, the the raw file as uh, clean as possible out of the camera no JPEG but it does really good JPEG anyway uh, it also does bracketing of dynamic range ISO uh, white balance and also focus stacking as uh, you actually can do from 1 to 999 pictures uh, with a uh, setting the time in between like uh, uh, from 0 to 10 seconds so if you're doing actually focus stacking with a flash uh, you need the flash to recycle to make next of the following picture so you can indicate the time for people who don't know what focus stacking is is actually when uh, you want to get more depth of field like in macro photography you make several pictures so that the point of focus is moving forward or backward and then after you actually uh, get all the pictures together and uh, this way uh, you have more depth of field because uh, as you moved it uh, it makes sure that, that it's everything in focus so it may be really useful focusing well you can do autofocus simple or uh, continuous and manual but there is also the new uh, thing which is face detect and eye detect so i'm going to show you now a, a test i made with claudia reyes you can actually look at the, this capture i made of the screen of the of the camera to see how the the, the small uh, small square is actually following the eye i didn't put a specific eye i put any eye it follows any of the of them the first one he catches and if he doesn't catch the eye catch actually the face with a small square have a look at it uh, testing eye detect with claudia as you can see uh if i move it follows the eye detects the face and the eye if i move out i lose her it becomes a small white frame when i come back green uh green frame because it says there's a face there and then the eye detect it's an automatic eye detect i didn't precise if i wanted uh the, the right or the left eye okay and i'm going to show you something i already uh, shown with the xt30 which is great this is uh, the autofocus uh, setting the when the continuous autofocus uh, as you can see you have the multi-purpose uh, then you have uh, set two uh, it follows the subject like here you have uh, a cheetah and uh, it uh, uh, ignore obstacles so it really follows the the subject then here they have set three for uh, accelerating and decelerating subject like a cart then you have mode four for suddenly appearing subject like uh, this guy is skiing uh, maybe at the border of the the ski track and you, you don't know when the, the the ski man is going to appear so uh, it's ready when, when he jumps he appears in the air you can actually uh, catch him the autofocus follows set five is for erratically uh, moving and accelerating subject like a tennis player and then mode 6 you can actually customize exactly like the tracking sensitivity the speed tracking sensitivity uh, the area all this so uh, with this you can actually have the perfect uh, continuous autofocus depending on what actually you need to do white balance well as always uh, like you have the preset or you can do it exactly uh, custom white balance obviously 
uh, timer 10 and 2 seconds. Time lapse. You can actually do time lapse. Uh, you can indicate the time between each picture, the amount of picture uh, that need to be taken, and at what time to start. So you actually uh, can prepare your camera to stop when you want. It also does a panoramic picture. I pass you one of the pictures I made. There is a hot shoe here for flash, but there is no flash integrated. But Fuji gives you gives you what sells you it's included and eh? so you don't have to pay extra it's included maybe if you lose it you have to put another one a small flash unit the same as olympus does and then you have your flash that is ready uh, to shoot okay so i think this is a really good solution because uh, very often we don't use that kind of flashes so why do we want it but also uh the fact that sometimes you actually need it to save you or to trigger a flash in slave mode so I think it's, uh, it, it's good to have the, this small optional flash. The viewfinder is really good, 100%. I really like it. It's, uh, it's really well. I, I don't see too much uh, uh, rolling shutter and things like this. It, it's okay. It's nice. Video recording. This is what many people always ask. Does it do, for, does it do 4K? Can you do slow motion? All this. Well... Fujifilm was really late getting into a uh, video and uh, I think with the X-T3 and the X-T30 they've made a massive jump and uh, forward, not backward, massive jump and now they offer something that is really, uh, that can compete with some uh, Sony solution or Canon solution. 4K, two kind of 4Ks, 4K cinema and 4K normal but both can be done without cropping because many camera when you do 4k it actually crops and this one does not crop so this is brilliant the 4k cine is a really wide version 4096 by 2160 and the 4k standard 3840 by 2160p i'm going to tell you about uh, the frame rate you can actually do and how long you can actually record uh, it's the same on both 4kc and 4k so you can do 60 around because it's actually a 59.94p so i'm going to round to 60 so 60 50 30 25 24 p at 400 200 100 megabits per second and you can record this on 60 and 50 during 20 minutes then you have to restart a new file okay and then in 30 25 and 24p you get 30 minute recording time continuous recording time in 4k and standard same thing full hd you also have two full hd you have a full hd which is uh, 2048 by 1080 and one that is 1920 by 1080 and the speeds for this are frame, frame rate are 60 50 30 50 24 you can record at 20 150 megabits per second same thing on both full hg in both case you can record during 30 minutes before needed to restart then you have slow motion at 100 in full hd in 120 and 100p at 200 megabits but you are limited to six minute recording time i don't know if it's due to uh, whatever heating or whatever but it's limited to six minutes i don't think that's a problem because normally you actually catch some uh, short uh short short moment when you do this and uh after you include it in the rest of your video so i think six minutes is fine not sure for some people for, but for me it's fine you have a simulation of film as i said before you have 16 mode like provia astia uh, black and white and several things I don't use that because I prefer to do it to my computer but I know that many people uh, don't know how to do it or don't like to do it and they want to have a JPEG that has everything out of the camera so they can publish straight away so if they like it that's fine you also have a uh, advanced filter if you want to do like a uh, miniature style or toy uh, style like um, uh, dynamic tone or um, partial uh, color saturation desaturation all this same thing i don't use this but it's there you have wi-fi bluetooth and uh important i think the connectivity is really good what could i tell about the battery life well the battery life has been better with the xt2 you would get uh, like 370 pictures now you get with this 390 pictures if you do video uh the battery life is not the same if you're using the face detect that if you are not using the face detect 
if you use the face detect uh, on 4k is 40 minutes and on full HD is 45 minutes and if you don't use this, the face detect then you get 55 minutes in 4k and about 75 uh, minutes in full HD dimension dimension is really nice as you, you saw on, in my hand I don't like I don't like I don't have really big hands but uh, I'm average but if you look at it it's okay I think it's nice the weight is really good 540 grams with the battery and the memory card included it works with temperature from minus 10 up to 40 degrees so what would I tell about the good thing and the bad thing I think first of all uh, when I decided to uh, buy my Olympus or MD5 M Mark II uh, I actually thought about Fujifilm I tested the X-T1 then and I the specs for the X-T2 but it was not out yet and uh, when I tested the X-T2 I thought well I was right to get Olympus I'm, I still think it's better so what's now well I think the good thing about this camera the colors are brilliant size and weight is perfect a bit bigger and a bit uh, more heavy than my Olympus the autofocus is outstanding low light mm, I detect all this brilliant the weight fills in your hand is brilliant you have everything at your hand you don't actually need to check the menus if you don't want to check the menus I mean you actually have all your fingers and uh, it's easy even without leaving your, your, your eye you actually check in your screen in, in there I mean the, the viewfinder tells you you easily move things I think it, it's really a, a good camera easy to use JPEG are nice if you what I'm publishing now are raw files uh, that are, are edited but the JPEG are really clean. Other good point about RAW files is that not every uh, software actually handles properly the, the Fujifilm RAW file because it's a next gen uh, sensor which is different what other people do. So some uh, software do not uh, actually uh, manage it properly. But Fujifilm includes a license of Capture One uh, by Phase One which is one of the best uh, raw editors so it's perfect it's included I think it's about worth about 300 uh, US dollars so it's not a small gift I think it's a great piece of software that's included in there what would do that uh, I would prefer still my Olympus first of all I think uh, I don't really like the the screen I would prefer to have a fully articulated screen Second really negative to me is uh, the IBIS, that there is no IBIS in the, the Fujifilm body. And I think when you see uh, the way you can shoot with the IBIS of, the, of the, the Olympus, the stabilization is amazing. You think, wow, on Fujifilm they're really missing that. And that's a pity. I know the lens if it is, uh, is stabilized, but it's not exactly the same thing. The result is not as good. Okay, so I think it could be better. Uh, it would be nice. I, I hope on the X-T4 there will be some uh, kind of IBIS. On the X, X, uh, H1 they did put one. Okay, it works fine. Other negative, small negative, the way to use uh, the wheel, but it's more a question of taste and getting used to it than a problem. And also here, it's very easy to change the aperture by accident. So I think I would prefer to have really uh, crank uh, wheel like on a Leica. Uh, uh, aperture ring it goes click 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 and it's really clear it doesn't you don't move it by accident unless the cranks are a bit uh, dead you know but you don't move it by accident so after using this camera I was thinking so what's wrong with the camera the side of this what I'm telling and I checked a uh, KW, KW and uh, see what he was saying about the the XT3 we told you about six months ago when it came out and it came to the same conclusion as mine is uh, this is probably one of the best APS-C camera right now for me it's the best uh, I will need to do some uh, in-depth test of the of the Nikon D500 or the Canon uh, 7D Mark II but honestly this is an amazing camera so would I buy it because many people already asked me by email when they knew I was going to review that camera will you uh, abandon uh, Olympus and go for Fujifilm well I'm going to be honest uh, when I tested the X-T2 I thought well I think I'm really happy to still be with Olympus right now with the X-T3 
I'm still happy to be with Olympus uh, because there are some features like uh, the uh, live uh, composite for long exposure and the high resolution possibility of the Olympus that really makes me go in favor of Olympus and what really really make me stay with Olympus is the IBS, the in-body system. So I would not leave Olympus for the X-T3. What's about the X-T4 when it comes out? Well, if the X-T4 has uh, an IBIS uh, and uh, Olympus has not uh, made a new uh, EM5 Mark III, I'd li I would be likely uh, to leave for, uh, for Fujifilm if, 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 um, if uh, it's the right time for me to change cameras. I, I, I don't go for new cameras. I change cameras when mine doesn't, don't give me what I need or because they're old and they're at risk of uh, breaking or whatever, then I change them. But uh, maybe I would go for the X-T4, but we need to see what Olympus is coming up with if uh, they actually make uh, a 5 Mark III, obviously. Would I recommend it? Well, if you don't have any camera, and uh, you want a serious APS-C, this is the camera. No doubt about it. Honestly, when I check the X-T30 compared with the, compared with the Alpha uh, 6400 by Sony, I preferred maybe the 6400 because I think the, the autofocus, the eye detect was better. Right now, I'm not able to tell you which one is better, if the X-T3 or the 6400. I cannot tell you. I think they're really close there. So. If I look at the rest of the camera, uh, the weight field, all this, definitely for me, this is the best APS-C and I surely recommend it. Who would need it? Well, I think anyone, because very often people actually say, yeah, yeah, but for wedding you need full frame. I think if your files are fine, okay, at 12,800 or 6400, you don't need these uh, top of the range ISO uh, results. So uh, you prefer to have a lighter weight, you prefer to have a better autofocus like this one. And I think it makes all the sense to use this camera for wedding. For sport, 11 frames per second is fine. Uh, on mechanical, uh, 20 without crop. Uh, on uh, electronic shutter, it's better than many, 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 uh, well, uh, I would say most reflex camera, the 5D, by the, the D5 by Nikon, the 1 Mark II, uh, 1X Mark II by Canon, they're better anyway. So uh, I would need maybe to check uh, a mirrorless like the Alpha, uh, Sony Alpha 9. But uh, actually, uh, if we look at uh, this, you save a lot of money with this camera. It's about 1500 euros and you say, with this lens. I think you save a, really a lot of money with this camera because it gives you uh, many things. I mean, when people tell you, uh, yeah, but uh, bokeh is better on full frame, check what I showed you here and you see bokeh is no problem for portrait, all this. So if you want a mirrorless camera and you're okay with APS-C format, this is the camera to buy, honestly go for it. Noth nothing wrong with it. The IBIS would be fine, but with the um, stabilized lens, we can live without IBIS. But I do hope they will get it. So uh, yes, I really recommend this camera more than any other APS-C I've tried and seen. Yes, definitely. Thank you for watching uh, this video. Thank you so much to Photosura for lending me his gear for so many years and always let me tell uh, whatever I want to tell, negative, positive, anything. So thank you very much. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. There's a button down here somewhere and a small bell. If you click on it, you will get a notification when I upload a new video. My website, ericgibo.com. If you have any question, leave a comment below. Send me an email to info at ericgibo.com. And I also uh, put some links to other parts of my channel and links of my gear on Amazon. Thank you very much. Bye.